In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we prepare ourselves to enter into this new day, as we prepare ourselves to spend this time with God, let us close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord. Let us thank Him that He has woken us up this morning. He has given us good health. He has kept us in His love. Most importantly, we see that at every moment His gaze is upon us. He loves us. He protects us. He guides us. And for that, let us praise the Lord. Let us thank the Lord. In our life, we see that there are many moments wherein we do not recognize the presence of God in our lives. There are certain moments that we take for granted. And therefore, it becomes difficult for us to recognize the graces and the blessings that we receive from the Lord. And therefore, as we begin today's morning offering, let us thank the Lord for all those blessings that He has given us. We begin by thanking God for the gift of life, for the various talents, for the various capabilities that He has given us. We also thank Him for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We also continue to pray for all those who have been instrumental in shaping and molding us, and we ask the Lord to bless them abundantly and give them good health of mind and body. We also thank the Lord for giving us this new day, a day that may help us to complete some of the tasks that were left incomplete, or maybe today may give us an opportunity to reach out to others. Whatever we do today, let us ask the Lord to be part of it. Let us ask the Lord to guide us, to show us the way so that whatever we do may indeed reveal His love, joy and mercy to the world. At the same time, let us also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us, opportunities to use our talents and abilities for the better good. Also we thank Him for the experiences that we have had. We all remember and cherish the good experiences, but there have been also experiences that have been bitter, that have been difficult, but nonetheless these have been experiences that have taught us valuable lessons in life. And therefore we thank the Lord for these experiences as well. Finally, we also thank the Lord for always being there with us guiding us, protecting us, and let us ask Him to do the same today, so that every step that we take, every word that we utter, and every action that we do may reveal and radiate the peace, joy, and mercy of Christ to people around us. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, today we shall reflect and meditate on Psalm 52. As usual, we shall have an overview of the psalm and then we shall go into its details. Now, generally speaking, Psalm 52 is a lament that is written by David and it is likely in response to the treachery of Doeg the Adomite. Now, we know that Doeg the Adomite had betrayed David to King Saul. And this psalm is divided into two main sections. So the first section contains verses 1 to 5. And this will describe the wickedness of Doeg 
and his eventual downfall. While the second part of the psalm, the second section which has verses 6 to 9, they offer a contrast between the wickedness of Doeg and the faithfulness of God. Similarly, we see that when we look at the psalm, the psalm gives us a picture of what it is to be faithful and what it is to trust and place our faith in God. So therefore, verse 1 begins with David directly addressing Doeg, calling him a mighty man who boasts of evil deeds. And then David asks why Doeg boasts of evil and warns him that God will eventually bring him down. In the second verse, we see that David's warning to Doeg continues. And this reminds him that God's judgment will be swift and thorough. David compares Doeg to a sharp razor and a deceitful tongue, highlighting the danger that his words and actions pose. Moving on to verse 3, we see that the verse emphasizes the extent of evil that Doeg does, describing him as the one who loves evil more than good, and therefore lying more than speaking truth. Therefore, we see that Doeg has been one who has been lying a lot rather than speaking the truth and wanting to know the truth. And therefore, Doeg is warned by David that his love of evil will ultimately result in his destruction. And therefore, the following verse, verse 4 also continues the same description that David does of Doeg's wickedness comparing him to a devouring fire that consumes everything in its path. And therefore, David notes that Doeg has set himself against those who are righteous and warns that God will eventually cut him off. And therefore, this first section is concluded in verse 5, where we have David again warning that God will bring Doeg down. David notes that Doeg will be uprooted and driven away from the land of the living and that the righteous will ultimately see his downfall. So therefore, this first part of the psalm is kind of a message of hope to most of us. We live in a world where we see so much of evil, where we see so much of corruption. We see so many things being done in the wrong manner. And sometimes we may ask, how is this permitted? How does this happen? And here, this first part of the psalm gives us hope, saying that eventually all those who do evil will have to face the consequences. They will be cut off from the Lord. And therefore, the first section of the psalm emphasizes that we need to do good. We need to focus on the truth, focus on righteousness. We now move to the second section of the psalm. And the second section shows us how David contrasts the wickedness of Doeg with the faithfulness of God. And therefore, this begins in verse 6 with a statement of faith in which David declares that he trusts in God's steadfast love and mercy. Now, verse 7 continues with David's description of God's faithfulness noting that God will ultimately bring down those who trust in their own strength and wealth. And therefore, we are called to place our faith and trust in God. When we place our faith in ourselves or in the worldly things, ultimately they will lead to our downfall. And therefore, David compares the wicked to a green olive tree, which may flourish for a time, but will eventually wither and die. And therefore, nothing is permanent in today's world. Therefore, we need to place our faith and trust in the Lord so that when the time comes, the Lord will take care of us. Verse 8 emphasizes this contrast between the wickedness of Doeg and the faithfulness of God. As David now declares that he will praise God forever for his steadfast love and justice. Now, David notes that he will wait for God to act, trusting that God will eventually bring down the evil and vindicate the righteous. 
and therefore Psalm 9 will conclude this second section of the Psalm and the conclusion is nicely done with a statement of hope as here David declares that he will continue to wait for God's salvation and that he will trust in God's name. David notes that God's name is a strong tower in which the righteous may take refuge and that God will ultimately bring salvation to his people. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on Psalm 52, there may be some kind of a thought or a statement that which eventually would have touched us. Therefore, let us remain with that thought, let us remain with that sentence or statement. And let us reflect on it and apply it to our lives so that it may take root in us. And therefore, as we do this, let us ask the Lord to bless us, to be with us, to guide us, so that whatever we do today, it may be for His greater glory, that we may be able to distinguish between what is good and what is evil, and that we may follow on the path of righteousness. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular, for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of March. For the new martyrs, we pray that those who risk their lives for the Gospel in various parts of the world inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Act of Contrition O my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended Thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments, but most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. 
pray to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same Spirit, help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for priests. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of our priests. Through them we experience your presence in the sacraments. Help our priests to be strong in their vocation. Set their souls on fire with love for your people. Grant them the wisdom, understanding and strength they need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Inspire them with the vision of your kingdom. Give them the words they need to spread the gospel. Allow them to experience joy in their ministry. Help them to become instruments of your divine grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns as our eternal priest. Amen. The Breastplate of Saint Patrick I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of of the Trinity through a belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of every man who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ in the ear that hears me. Amen. The Angelus, the angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, 
O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for St. Joseph's Protection O St. Joseph, whose protection is so great, so prompt, so strong, before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your Divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. Prayer of Thanksgiving God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family and friends without which there would be no life. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold filling the universe with wonder, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. We thank you for setting us in communities, for families who nurture our becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks, for strangers who welcome us into their midst, for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding, for children who lighten our moments with delight, for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. We thank you for this day, for life, and one more day to love, for opportunity, and one more day to work for justice and peace, for neighbors and one more person to love and by whom be loved, for your grace and one more experience of your presence, for your promise to be with us, to be our God and 
to give salvation. For these and all blessings, we give you thanks, eternal loving God. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Prayer to the Garden Angel Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, rule and guide. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Litany to Mary, the Loreto Litany Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, Christ, hear us, Christ, graciously hear us. God the Father of Heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, pray for us. Mother of Mercy, pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace, pray for us. Mother of Hope, pray for us. Mother Most Pure, pray for us. Mother Most Chaste, pray for us. Mother Inviolate, pray for us. Mother Undefiled, pray for us. Mother Most Amiable, pray for us. Mother Admirable, pray for us. Mother of Good Counsel, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mother of our Saviour, pray for us. Virgin Most Prudent, pray for us. Virgin Most Venerable, pray for us. Virgin Most Renowned, pray 
for us. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Cause of our joy, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion, pray for us. Mystical rose, pray for us. Tower of David, pray for us. Tower of ivory, pray for us. House of gold, pray for us. Ark of the covenant pray for us gate of heaven pray for us morning star pray for us health of the sick pray for us refuge of sinners pray for us solace of migrants pray for us comfort of the afflicted pray for us help of christians pray for us queen of angels pray for us queen of patriarchs pray for us queen of prophets pray for us queen of apostles pray for us queen of martyrs pray for us queen of confessors pray for us queen of virgins pray for us queen of all saints pray for us queen conceived without original sin pray for us queen assumed into heaven pray for us queen of the most holy rosary pray for us queen of families pray for us queen of peace pray for us lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world spare us o lord lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world graciously hear us o lord lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world have mercy on us pray for us o holy mother of god that we may be made worthy of the promises of christ let us pray grant we beseech thee o lord god that we your servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body and by the glorious intercession of the blessed mary ever virgin may be delivered from present sorrow and obtain eternal joy through christ our lord amen pray to saint michael the archangel for protection saint michael the archangel defend us in battle be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil may god rebuke him we humbly pray and do thou o prince of the heavenly hosts by the power of god thrust into hell satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen act of adoration o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine saint gertrude prayer for souls in purgatory 
eternal father i offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine son jesus in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen